Hey everybody, Edo here, and this is the Heroes and Tricks How to Play video. Heroes and Tricks is an on-the-go trick-taking game with some bluffing, deduction, a little luck, and an awesome, awesome reveal. This is for two to six players, and the standard play, which is the one that I'm going to show you, lasts about 20 minutes. Uh, I'll be showing you a three to six player game. The two player uh, version has a couple nuances for just two players. But I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see the table in front of me and we'll get started. And here we have Heroes and Tricks. It all comes in this fantastic box for on the go play. It's actually a component in the game, which we'll see in a second. Magnetic lip. And uh, this is still moving along, but there'll be the divider here, which we'll talk about and uh, all, all that good stuff. But so here's the box. And then there are three uh, types of cards. There are the heroes, the gear, and the play card. So to look at the play cards for a second, these, oop, get them all up. These represent all uh, the four different suits in four different colors. So we have, uh, and one through eight. So we have red cards, doot, 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 doot. green cards, uh, green dice, yellow dice, and you'll see that this is sort of traveling through the colors. Yellow meeple, blue meeple, upside down, blue chip or token, and then uh, red chip or token. And so the way that these suits and colors overlap is important, and what you'll find that is that in the lip of the Heroes and Tricks box is a nifty guide that shows all that I just described. It also talks about how jump works, which is the best you can have is color, be on color suit and the highest number, then color and highest suit and highest and then highest number. So I'll talk about that in a second, but this is with you at all times, okay? Then jumping to the other side, we have the heroes and the heroes are what lead all of the different tricks. And so these are, are coming along as well, um, but these represent all of those different categories and there's two of each. So there's two yellow meeples. Uh, for example, and some of them obviously aren't quite done yet. And then lastly, we have the gear cards, and the gear cards are used to impact the tricks. And there's a variety of these that are coming along. Some are play before trick, while others are play in trick. That's the big uh, distinction between the two, and they all have different abilities, and as you can see, the most work needs to be done on these cards, but they will look fantastic. Anyway, so, um, Heroes and Tricks is you're trying to be the player who scores the most heroes, and you do that by winning the trick. And, and, and at the start of a trick, a hero is going to be placed by a player in the front of the box, and that's how the trick's gonna go. I'm actually gonna take a second to deal everything out. Um, hands are gonna be dealt by the number of players, obviously, but you're gonna get a bunch of play cards in a three-player game. You're gonna get eight. Um, and then you're gonna get, each player's gonna get three tricks, uh, three gear cards, and then the heroes are actually dealt over the course of play, and I'll show that. So I'm gonna take a second, deal this out, and come back. So as you can see here, I've dealt out three players, and I have the Heroes and Tricks box, which I'll talk about in a second, but in a three-player game, each player gets two, four, six, eight play cards, and three gear cards. No matter how many players, you're always gonna get three gear cards. The play cards change per number of players, and in essence, you're gonna go around the table twice, uh, each player playing one, cur one card each trick, and then you're gonna have two left over, okay? So I've dealt out each of these players, and we can just take a quick look, look. Oop, we dealt this guy out as well. Different set of cards, different set of colors. I organized them a little bit, different gear. And then we've set up the Heroes and Tricks box. Now the Heroes and Tricks box you know, obviously we're playing on a table right now, but the point is that you wouldn't have to play on a table. You could play um, at a restaurant or in a line or on a walk. And to do that, all of the cards are kept within the box and all the cards that aren't being used as well as we're gonna play into the box. And so in the box, there's this divider that's white right now. It's not gonna always be white, but for the moment it's white. It'll be colored like the other stuff. And in between, in the middle section is going to be all the cards you're not using and cards that are used and discarded. In the top, we've placed all of the heroes and the bottom's empty and that's where we're gonna play. So, as I was talking about earlier in Heroes and Tricks, you, uh, the first player is gonna pull up the back hero. So no one else can see it because they're gonna see the back. They see I grabbed a hero, of course, but they haven't seen it, it's the back hero and I'm gonna slide it in front here. This is hidden information. 
I am the only player who knows who's in the box, okay? And my objective, it's a trick-taking game, is so I want to play the best card to win this trick. And I do that by looking at this card, uh, the hero, and the hero is a red card. So, you know, again, a reminder of the different uh, combinations. And then winning a trick, the best is color, suit, and highest number. So the best card to play on this would be, you guessed it, a red card eight. Uh, if I didn't have any red, a green card eight. Um, I, so I didn't have any red, so I jumped right to suit. If I didn't have either color or suit, it would just be the highest number, right? So I put that down. I'm going to close this up for a second. I'm going to pick up my cards here. Doing this on camera is a little bit awkward, but that's okay. And I clearly don't have any red, right? I need to have the red card, but I don't. But I do have a green six uh, card. So I'm going to say, all right, well, let me put that in, okay? So I do that. Close up the box. This is somebody else's hand. And then I pass this to the next player. Now when they open this, all they see is six. Green six, right? They don't see that it was red. So they don't have that information. So the next player is gonna look at his cards. And I can do this with a box in my hand uh, through the camera. And let's see, well, I've got a green four and uh, red three and looking around and I'm looking at this and I'm like, hmm, I don't know what his last card played was, or I don't know what the hero is, but he played a green six, and let me look at my stuff. I've got this green four, I could play the red, but I don't know what the hero is, but I look at my gear, for example, and I see the broadsword, and it says play and trick. It says your car, you play, uh, play and trick. Your play card counts as plus two value and wins ties. Well, and this is where you get into some of that deduction and playing, I play the gear behind my card, and I said, well, if this is going to make it a six, but I win in ties, and, and second player wins in time, uh, tie anyway, but it double wins, uh, I'm going to play this, and I know that I've beaten the card in front of me. So I don't know what's going to happen next, but I do know I beat the card in front of me, and a lot of this game is thinking through that, thinking which heroes have been played, which haven't, how they work together. But so, that player has taken their turn, and now the last player looks in and sees the four, green four again, and they're going to look at their hand, and looking at their hand... Well, I've got a red two card, I've got some chips, meeples, dice, but I don't have uh, the any green cards. And I don't know that it was a red card, right? So I look at this and I have two decisions to make. I could either say, hmm, maybe I can't beat the four, but if it was a red that led somebody to play this, I could play this and I would win. Or perhaps the, that uh, card, it, it was the color that was right, but they had the wrong symbol. And let's say in this case, I just happened to go with red, right? So I have an inkling that this might be valuable, but it's also a low card. So in the case, you know, when you're last position, it can be hard. So in the case it, it, it loses, I'm not losing a great card, right? It'd be a big play to play a seven when I wasn't sure, but a two is not that big of a play. So, then I've played my cards, and then the player does the reveal. I'm sorry about it. And so in the reveal, you're going to lay out the hero, and I'll do this in the air, and you're going to say, okay, hey, everybody, it was the cheat. It was a red card. So the highest in here is green card, six, four, oh, with the, with the sword. So this is now the winning card, but then look. The two came in, and the two has suit and color, so it beats just color. So this player would win, they would get the hero. And actually, you hold it facing out so everyone um, can see which heroes have been won, because you also know the heroes in the deck. And you're going to go around and around. And so in this game, really, there's a lot to think about in terms of the card that's showing, the card that's in play, and thinking through what other player, players may have done. It's also about possibly bluffing and doing something that leads somebody to make a mistake and underbid, um, or using your gear at the appropriate time. When trick is revealed, exchange one of the play cards with one play card from an opponent's hand, their choice. Um, play before trick, the player that wins the trick takes his card for an extra point. This is another one, Berserker Act. If the eight of the winning suit and color was played, you win. This is a great card if I'm the second player, because if the first player 
plays, uh, I don't know if anyone had an eight, but if, 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 if the first player has played a, uh, no one has an eight, uh, yellow eight of a meeple, there's a good chance that's the winning card because they they would only have played that if that, you know, not for sure, but likely. So then playing that Berserker Axe is a great card to play in my turn. Um, and then you'll just keep passing. Person who ends with a box starts the next. So everyone is going to get a chance with um, being the one to reveal and look at the heroes. And that is how you play Heroes and Tricks. I'm going to link the rules in the description so you can read up a little bit more there, but it'll be in a PDF form as opposed to um, the version that's gonna be in the box, because why not make it easy for you? So again, heroes and tricks, thanks.